Last month I made a video all about shooting Polaroid film, specifically black and white film, and shooting that with intention. And while I was working on that video, I wanted to kind of refine how I scan or digitize any of my instant film. I've been using this Epson V600, and it has served me well and slow. I've wanted to find a faster method and also just something that gives me better image quality and also kind of translates the physicality of a Polaroid photo. And going the route of a copy stand, you know, what it's actually intended for, being able to make reproductions of something, uh, just being able to use the same setup that I use for scanning all of my roll film, I wanted to try that out and just see what the results would be like in comparison, and I am very, very happy with this method. So I wanna share that with you all today, just how I do it, how simple it can be, and just how I clean things up and post as well. Right off the bat, I wanna make it clear that none of the specific gear or equipment that I'm using is necessary. You can use whatever camera you have. If you don't have a copy stand or a setup like this for digitizing film, you can also just use a tripod and you know get it over top of the Polaroid and just angle the tripod head all the way down. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Just take the general principle and you can get the same results. First thing you wanna do is just make sure everything is level when you get your camera set up. However that may be, uh, a great way to do that is with these little leveling cubes that just fit in the hot shoe of your camera. I'll throw a link down below, they're super cheap, but they're great for scanning film, just making sure you have everything level. You just wanna make sure you get the camera high enough so that the Polaroid isn't being cropped at all. You have a nice open border around everything. And I just put a couple sheets of white copy paper underneath the print. This just makes sure that none of the desk is showing. That's why I grab a couple of sheets. Uh, copy paper isn't very thick, so oftentimes you can still see the wood grain underneath. If you use like white foam core board or something like that, you don't have to worry about it. But just putting that underneath there, I'm gonna be using a flash to light this and where I position the flash is gonna determine where any of that little shadow is gonna be because that's one thing I like about this method over using a flatbed scanner. I find that using a flatbed scanner, you lose a little bit of the depth of the physical object that a Polaroid print is. It's not perfectly flat. Photographing it on white like this with the flash, you add just a little bit of a shadow that I think just adds a nice level of physicality to it. And no matter what film type it is or what aspect ratio it is, I always photograph it in landscape orientation. That way I have to do less cropping and post, just keeping as much resolution as I can. Speaking of resolution, a great thing about this this Lumix system being able to do this sort of multi-shot mode, stitching a bunch of photos together, essentially giving you a massive resolution. The problem with that is you're not gonna be able to use a flash. You can do this method with continuous light. However, flash is so much more powerful. It's much easier to get a very clean, consistent image without having to really control all of the light in your scene. With continuous lighting, it's much easier to get different color temperatures of ambient light creeping in there and causing color shifts. So for this method, I do like to use flash and just using the standard resolution, which is more than enough for anything I'm gonna be doing with these photos. Photos. But for me with the flash, um, I just use this little Westcott FJ80 speed light. I've had this for years, it works great. Uh, this little Westcott FJ X2M trigger that I use with it. Uh, these two, this is all I use. It's very, very simple. Um, essentially, the idea, wherever you want that drop shadow to be, you just wanna make sure you position your light 180 degrees from that. So if I like to have the shadow a little bit right here along the bottom of the edge of the frame, I'm gonna essentially position my light just on the other side of that in order to cast the shadow that way. That's the only real thing you need to keep in mind with the direction of the flash. You wanna make sure it's a decent amount of way. If you think about the inverse square law, the closer the light source to the subject, or in this case, the closer this flash gets to the Polaroid, the quicker that light fall off is gonna be. You're gonna end up with one really hot side of the frame and a much darker edge, whereas if you bring the light further back and just increase the intensity or adjust your exposure however you want to, if you bring that light further back, you're gonna be evenly lighting everything across here, which is what you want. I hope all of that made sense and it wasn't too confusing. Essentially, the idea is just evenly lighting your Polaroid. That way, everything looks nice and clean, the same way you would get it from a traditional scanner. But with a better look, I think, with the physical feel of it, just photographing it this way, and I think just better image quality as well in terms of just overall sharpness. 
if I'm shooting flash, I'm gonna shoot at the highest sync speed on the camera. I don't need anything faster than that, like high speed sync. So one over 200 or one over 250th, something around there. Usually I'll stop the lens down to F8 or so. We are working with a macro lens, so the depth of field in this range is extremely shallow. So just stopping the lens down. I like to keep my ISO as low as I can, so whatever the base ISO of the camera is, and then whatever my flash power needs to be in order to match those settings on the camera, that's what I'll do. A couple of other things about my particular setup. I have this uh, sheet of cardboard right here. This is just to reflect the surface here of the Polaroid, the little layer of plastic on the front. It's very, very reflective. So you wanna be able to eliminate that as much as possible. And the way to do that is just putting something right here, essentially at the very front of your lens, it's gonna cover up everything else above it. So it's not gonna catch any reflections up here. Maybe a little bit of a bigger sheet, maybe black foam board, that would probably work even better, but had some scrap cardboard, just trace the lens and cut it out with a knife, stuck it on there. It fits perfectly, it does the job, doesn't need to be fancy. And one other thing I use is this little remote. This is just some cheap little remote that I probably got off of Amazon. It just plugs into Panasonic cameras. And that way I can just use this remote to trigger the camera. That way I'm not pushing on the camera, introducing any kind of shake. Once everything is set up, that's where the convenience really starts to shine because it's a matter of just setting the Polaroid down hitting the shutter and then just moving on to the next one. And you just do that over and over. Sometimes these things aren't perfectly flat. So I have these little double-sided adhesive stickers. They work really well. If the photo isn't laying perfectly flat, I'll just put one on each corner on the back and just stick it down to the sheet of paper. And that holds it nice and flat to photograph. And then when I'm done, I can reuse them next time I have a photo that needs it. Once you've photographed everything, you're not done yet. You still need to import these and do a little bit of cleanup work to get the best results. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that right after I pay some bills and tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for over a decade, long before they ever sponsored this channel because they truly are the best all-in-one place to build your own website. If you're a photographer, I highly encourage you to make your own website and give your work a place to live. You're not gonna be just shuffling it into the middle of an algorithm on all of these different platforms. You can get started with a simple template and customize it however you need, and then you can start sharing your work there and doing even more with it. When I was a wedding photographer, I used to showcase my work there on my website and that was how I booked my clients. Nowadays, I like to use my website to self-publish, so I have my online store to self-publish prints and zines and books. My email newsletter, how I keep up with all of you each month, I'm able to do that directly through Squarespace. Everything you need is all in one place and it's incredibly easy to use. You can get a free trial started at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash mattday and use the code mattday at checkout. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. Once you have the files ready, you just need to clean them up a little bit to make sure everything is exactly how you want it. Sometimes it's a simple matter of just enabling lens corrections and making sure there isn't too much of a vignette. But in order to get a nice pure white background with just one simple light, the way I like to do this is in Lightroom, just using the masking tool. I can select just the Polaroid itself and then make adjustments to the area around it, just boosting the whites and making sure everything is pure white. So if I wanna post these on Instagram and just have a nice clean white border around the print, that's a great way to do it. And also for the future, I wanna do a book of all instant film. That's gonna be the next big book at least. There might be some small stuff before that, but I know I wanna make a big book of all of the instant film over two decades. So this method printed on white paper, I think it will work really, really well for that. It might be easier to do, you know, the whole white mask and everything. It might be easier to do that in Photoshop. Some of you might be watching this video going, why would you use Lightroom for that instead of Photoshop? I'm pretty inexperienced when it comes to Photoshop. For someone who's been a photographer for 20 years, I know the bare minimum. So maybe for you, you'll go Photoshop for that route. That's totally fine. Again, this is just what I do. It's worked out really well. I've been able to knock out scanning a bunch of stuff. I'm still in the process of just kind of gathering everything and just going through making selections for the eventual book, but trying to imagine doing that with a flatbed scanner, it just seems like it would take me much, much longer and I don't think I would ever be as happy with the results. But what do you guys think? I'm curious what your method is for scanning instant film or if you've tried something like this, let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. I really hope it was helpful, but that's it for today. So thank you all for watching this one. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.